hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Outlander Season 1, Episode 2, Castle Leoc, and obviously I was really looking forward to this episode because, guys, I love last week's episode. I thought last week's episode was a great premiere. I love the way it started. I was really looking forward to this episode um, because, in case you guys don't know, Outlander is probably my favorite summer show. It really is my favorite summer show that I'm watching, and I'm just, I'm really into it. I really love this episode, loved everything about this episode, everything about it was really, really good. And, uh, yeah, so I really enjoyed this episode, and, um, let's just get to it, because overall, I really, really enjoyed it. Just a really good episode. So, of course, as we know, the last episode ended with Claire and Jamie and all of them arriving at Castle Leoc, and, um, she's on the horseback with Jamie. She, ha she's, um, get goes on the ground, and she watches a man, um, that we don't know yet, um, tends to the creatures, and he teases Rupert, one of the Highlanders she traveled with, about the poor horse having to carry his weight to Leoc. Um, and basically we then see this woman come out, um, Mrs. Fitzboggins, who I really like her acting. I think she's a good actress. Uh, she rushes over, tells Claire's traveling companion, um, you know, she's talking to uh, Claire's companion, making the woman giggle. And her laughter stops when she spots the wet and ragged looking and scandalously dressed, you know. Because um, Claire was scandalously dressed because, you know, she had sex the night before. Um, so Jamie introduces her, you know, Jamie introduces her to um, to Mrs. Fitzbogans. Also, I love the way they start the episode also, because Claire's very confused. She still doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know where she is or what's going on. She just knows that she is not in the 1940s. She knows that for a fact. She knows she's not in the 1940s. She doesn't know where she really is, though, and she's still very confused, and I like that they did that in the uh, beginning of the episode. I thought that was definitely very well done. So, basically, um, she explain Jamie explains that Murtaugh found her, and Dougal said they had to bring Claire with them. She offers to find Claire something to wear, basically, um, that's a bit, that's a bit more, and prepares to take Claire inside the castle. So, she kind of takes, she basically decides to take Claire in. However, she does have to keep tending to Jamie, because his wound does need more tending to, and, um, basically, that's what she has to do. So, Mrs. Fitzboggins basically decides to take her in and everything, and, um, you know, she's gonna help out Claire and everything, and she actually wants to be a good friend to Claire, you know, she wants her to call her Mrs. Fitz, and, uh, I thought that was a sweet scene, I really did like that, I definitely really like the, um, the bonding between Claire and Mrs. Fitz, I hope this continues, because I like their bonding, together. I really hope it does continue. So then we see, um, probably one of the most surprising parts of the episode, I really loved, uh, Jamie's backstory in this episode, we got a lot more of Jamie's backstory, because Jamie, just like, um, our Algernon and the Nick was in the last 15 minutes, we didn't see Jamie until, like, the last 20 minutes of Outlander, and, uh, we find out more about his character in this next scene. So Claire is tending to Jamie's wound, and she removes a blanket covering him to tend him further, and she pulls the fabric back, and she sees the young Highland, you know, she sees that his back is scarred. Um, so she's very surprised at seeing this, she doesn't know why it's scarred, and basically, he tells her it's because of the red coats. Um, and we find out what happened. Basically, in a nutshell, what happened was he was, he basically, in a nutshell, what happened was Jamie's father was away, the Redcoats came to his home, they rushed to his house from the fields after hearing his sister Jenny um, scream. Jamie fought two Redcoats because, you know, she, he knew that she was obviously in trouble. And it was there that Captain Randall exited the house, holding Jenny at gunpoint. Jamie froze, and, you know, he says that she's um, Bonnie. And basically, Captain Jack told Jamie, I'll take a closer look. And basically, she, he ended up ripping, it seemed like he was going to spare her, but he ended up ripping Jenny's dress open in front of the men, basically about to rape her, and telling him to hold Jamie's head up to force him to look. And afterward, he flogged Jamie in front of his sister. And not only did he do that, um, you know, basically we find out there was more than that, because he wanted to send a message, and um, basically this is what you get when you fight back from the, Eng from the English, um, basically he says. And, um, what ended up happening was, um, he ended up actually, you know, um, whipping him very savagely, savagely whipping him, and that's what ended up happening to him. He was savagely whipped, and that's how he got the scars, and now he's basically forced to be sort of like, um, his, his, um, um, basically his, his outlaw, that's what he is. He's his outlaw, and, uh, yeah, so, definitely that was a very good reveal. I like the way they did that reveal. I thought it was very well done. And I like that we got a little bit more backstory on Jamie. Definitely enjoyed that. 
So Jamie then, you know, want, really wants to change the subject because he can see that Claire is absolutely horrified. And he says to her, you know, you're a very kind woman with a good touch. By the way, the chemistry between the two of them is just very well done. You know, you can definitely tell there's a lot of chemistry between Jamie and Claire. Definitely a lot of chemistry between them. Um, the question is, are they actually going to pursue a relationship? I don't know. I mean, we know that Claire loves Frank more than anything. So the question is, is he actually going to do that? He ends up talking about Frank to her. And this really makes Claire start to wonder um, what is actually going on. And we actually see sort of like a flash a flash forward to 1945. And we see Frank and Reverend um, Wakefield finding the couple's abandoned car by uh, Craig, and, Craig and Dunn. And um, basically, you know... What Frank must be thinking is, I'm fine. I was just thinking about my, you know, um, what Frank must be thinking. And basically, she says, I'm fine. I was just thinking about my husband. And, you know, she's very worried about him thinking that maybe she just was abducted or even dead or even, you know, um, left him for another man. And she's just very concerned about how he could feel. And, you know, basically, she just starts to break down to tears. And, you know, she breaks down to tears because she really just is really upset because she still doesn't know where she is and she really wants to get back to Frank. And Jamie can see that she really does care about Frank and he ends up comforting her. And I thought that was definitely a sweet scene, the way that, that, worked, that worked out. You know, you can definitely see a sweet scene there. And uh, I enjoyed that definitely. So then the next day, Mrs. Fitz ends up waking up Claire. She dresses her in more appropriate garments. Um, you know, she ends up uh, dressing her up because, you know, um, she was she was basically wearing very revealing clothing. And I thought it was funny um, when uh, Claire was, like, in a bra and, and, Mrs. Fitz, and, Miss, and Mrs. Fitz was like, Dear God, what is that? And she's like, What kind of corset is that? And I thought that was kind of funny. Um, so she dresses her up, takes her in the doorway, and Murtaugh nods his head in the direction he'll be taking her. And Cagged Birds, Books, and Tape Street fill the room. Murtaugh brings Claire to a room that is a cluttered contrast to the rest of the castle's spareness. And she finally gets to learn where she is for the first time. We find out the date that she is. And that is November 1743. So she knows that she's in 1743 now. And uh, now she understands what's actually going on. So she ends up meeting with um, Colum McKenzie. Who basically, he is the... Um, the Lord of the Castle, you know, the guy that basically is the ruler of the Lord of Castle Leoc, and he turns the same business many have had with Claire since encountering her, finding out who she is, how does a woman end up wandering around um, in Vernus in just her shift, and basically he actually seems to really care about her. I like that he cared about her, definitely. He seemed to really care about her. And basically, she kind of, she makes up the story that she's a widow who was traveling to meet with the distant relatives overseas in France. She met, um, sh when she and her manservant were robbed by bandits, and she made a run for it, leaving her things behind, and in the woods she came across Captain Randall, who attacked her, and, um, basically, um, um, basically, Colum says to her that he apologizes, he, he, um, he realizes that Claire actually has an opening, um, using to, it to ask the Lord about arranging transportation back to Inverness. So basically, in five days, a man is passing by Castle Leoc. He can take her there, and, uh, she can go back to Inverness that way. That's how, because he actually really does care about her and wants her to go back to Inverness, because he can see the, the struggle she's going through. And I definitely enjoyed that. I like seeing that he actually did want to help her. I enjoyed that, definitely. She takes the device. She goes out for a walk at the top of the castle. She looks down the courtyard, and she smiles, because she, as she spots Dougal, playing, um, at sword fighting with a young redhead boy, and she then goes to dinner. Now, this dinner scene is very crucial. I thought this dinner scene was just very, very big. A lot of shit went down this dinner scene. Because we see a hush comes over to the hall. Claire walks in for dinner, basically. And Murtaugh is the lone diner. Um, he offers her a kindly not um, nod. And she reaches Colum's table at the top. And she bows and Dougal stands offering her, her his seat next to his brother, Colum. She sits down. Claire meets Colum's wife, uh, Lietta. And they exchange plus entries, but then disguises dinner and drinks the interrogation room column continues. Um, Claire tries to change the subject, the pronunciation of his name, and how close she is to her French relatives. You know, she is getting asked all these questions, really, and she really doesn't know how to answer them. And basically, 
she ends up saying, you know, but basically, um, she means young Jamie, and Jamie is at the stables with old Alec as the meal continues. Colm refills, um, Claire's cup again and again, and a short while later, you know, it seems to be going well, but a short while later, we see the little boy from the courtyard that she had um, seen before. Now, Claire kind of has preconceived notions about him, and of course... Keep in mind, everyone pretty much thinks that she is an English spy right now. Pretty much everyone thinks that, except for Jamie. Jamie doesn't seem to know that. Jamie seems to really be the only one, and also, um, Colm. He seems to really only be the two people that actually care about her. And Miss Fitz as well. I think Mrs. Fitz is going to be a good friend to her. Um, but basically, this little boy, you know, she really starts talking about him. It ends up going well until she makes one comment. She says to him that, you know, surely you remember Dougal, you were swinging him around... And she adds, you know, after everyone appears very confused and stunned by her comments, she says, I'm sorry, I appear to have made an error. And he says, I'm the son and heir of Colm McKenzie. He is the uh, son of Colm. And uh, basically, he's pretty upset by that. So now fully aware they were plying her with alcohol to get her lower to, to lower her guard. So um, she's very upset at what just happened. She's really is worried now at what's going to happen to her. She ends up skipping breakfast in the morning and she finds Jamie at the stables. Um, and, uh, he is leading a horse around the ring, and basically she knocks some metal hanging on the fence over, spooning, uh, spooking the horse and Jamie, and, you know, she says to him, what can I do for, you know, um, he says to her, what can I do for you, Mrs. Beauchamp, and she's there to help him, she's brought lunch and new bandages, and they sit and chat, and Jamie reveals there's actually a price on his head. He's wanted for murder, but he didn't actually kill the man he's wanted for, he didn't kill him, um, so... You know, um, she says, you're a very complicated man, Mr. McTavish. Um, and he knows that he has another story to tell, basically. And basically his story is that he was nearly immovable and close to death after a second flogging. You know, we find out more about what happened, actually, and I like that. I like that he told her more of his story, because he didn't finish his story. There was more to his story. Basically, Jamie's friends came to his rescue, but they were helping him escape, and a red coat was shot, and he says, I take it your real name's, um, we find out that his, his name's not actually McTavish, that's not actually his last name. And, you know, he says it's not, and he keeps his heads, you know, down, and Colm and Dougal actually know he's an outlaw, and they are actually his uncles on his mother's side, with so much mistrust of her gang around, she wonders why Jamie is so open. And, you know, she doesn't know why he's so open, because no one else really trusts her right now. So she does, really doesn't know why Jamie is being so open to her. And, you know, um, he just says, you asked. You know, you asked why. So that's why. So basically, old Alec ends up walking over and reminds Jamie that there's work to be done. And Jamie thanks Claire for lunch, fixing him up, and she gets up to leave. And, uh, yeah, so on her way back, though, this is a very important scene, because Claire ends up confronting Rupert about following her. And, you know, he says, I am, but, um, you know, basically I am, and, uh, but Dougal's eyes, not his head, um, and let me warn you, mistress, these eyes won't be turning their gaze from you until the head orders me to. He says that to her, basically. And, uh, he, he says to her that, I suspect you, you know, he tells her, I think you may be an English spy, and uh, he actually told her that straight out. I was surprised that he said that to her. I was very surprised that that happened. And um, Claire promised him she won't be doing much until she leaves in four days. So Dougal's men will have little to report on. Um, she's actually planning on leaving, of course, because, you know, Colm told her the plan that she can leave um, to go to Inverness in five days. And basically, Claire takes a moment to poke Dougal a little more, pointing out that clearly Colm doesn't tell his brother everything. He doesn't really... Because uh, Colm, I guess, didn't tell him that she was leaving. You know, Dougal didn't know, apparently. So she heads out to the fields to help harvest, and she meets a new friend. She meets another... We meet another new character. And I really like in this episode, we met, we met a lot of new characters. I really do like that. That's what a second episode should do. It should get us to introduce more characters, and I really like that. We get introduced to this um, girl, uh, Gilis Duncan. Um, pardon me if I pronounce the name wrong, but I believe it's Gilis Duncan. They actually become very good friends, they become very tight, and like Claire, she knows a lot about plants and their uses, and it has given her a real reputation. In fact, some people think she's a witch, um, actually, because she has such a, you know, she's so obsessed with that. She reveals um, many folks in the village believe Claire is a Sajanak spy, and she follows up the helpful warning with an invitation. She says, you should, you should come visit me sometime down in the village. I have a cabinet full of potions and medicine, me, uh, medicinals I wager would tickle you fancy. So um, 
basically, she tells Claire she hopes to see her later at the hall, and that's where they go. They go to the hall, basically, and I, I like that they really became very good friends. I do like that. I think Gillies is going to be a very good friend to Claire, definitely. I think she's going to be one of Claire's few friends that she has right now. So they go to the hall, and Claire ends up standing next to Gillies. They watch people in Gallic, and um, they ask Colin to ejectuate their squabbles. There's confusion over who owns a cow and more farming business to sell before a young, struggling girl who is dragging forward. And her father ends up accusing her of loose behavior. Um, so the man wants the young woman punished. And shock goes through the room because Colm is making his judgment. Jamie seems actually very interested in this case for whatever reason. He's very interested. So Claire watches as Murtaugh tries to dissuade him from doing something. Um, but of course, you know, because, you know, Jamie really d is not, he does not like Colm. He does not like Dougal. He, those are the two guys that he's after. He does not like the decision that Colm is making. And, you know, Murtaugh is trying to stop him from doing something he's going to regret. And, of course, you know, um, he, Rupert, though, ends up punching Jamie in the gut and he knocks him on the back. Dougal looks down, an indication to Rupert to keep him going. The next blow procedures blood. Claire's outrage but remains silent. Dougal wants the being to surprisingly continue. Like, he is just... Dougal, this this guy, is extremely harsh. Going way too far, in my opinion, definitely. And uh, Rupert ends up, punching, ends up punching Jamie in his bad shoulder. But Dougal still won't stop it. He still doesn't want to stop it. He, he wants it to go on. He likes seeing this, I guess. Um, he then punched him in the face. I think he likes seeing this because this was sort of his revenge. Because, you know, Jamie's basically his prisoner. And uh, Claire's about to jump in, but Gillies holds her back. Murtaugh helps Jamie up, walking over to Colm. Jamie bows, Colm nods his head in response. It's over, and Murtaugh helps him. The two walk out of the hall, and Jamie looks at Claire, and he says, This way's click quicker, and you'll stir less gossip. So basically, they go back to the fire, and Claire tends to Jamie again and asks him why he took the young woman's punishment. You know, because he she doesn't really know why he decided to take the woman's punishment because obviously he wasn't up, he wasn't you know he didn't think that the woman deserved it and she wants to know what why he did it what was so important to him. And Mrs. Fitz brings Jamie some tea, thanks, and the young woman is actually her grand um the young woman uh, Leary is actually her granddaughter. Um, that is basically why um, he was so concerned is because. It is Mrs. Fitz's granddaughter. Obviously, has a very close relationship with Mrs. Fitz. You know, I'm thinking Mrs. Fitz is basically the mom figure in his life right now. And, you know, he really wanted to protect her, her granddaughter. So, that's why he did that. So, Claire tells him to take advantage off his shoulder in the next two days. And, uh, basically, she explains that, um, Leary then pops her head in and says, I think someone would like to speak to you alone. And, um, Claire notes telling Jamie goodbye. And, yeah, so then we see who wants to speak to her. So it's morning, and Claire couldn't be more happier. She puts up a package Mrs. Fitz prepared for her on the cart, um, on the cart of the man who um, will take her to Inverness, because, you know, she's planning on leaving today. This is the day where she's planning on leaving. She's planning on going to Inverness. I was surprised she didn't tell Jamie, but I think the reason she didn't tell Jamie is because she doesn't want Jamie involved with this, because if she tells Jamie, she knows that he's probably going to want out of this as well. And she wants him to fight. She wants him to, you know, have a good life and everything. So I'm kind of glad she didn't tell Jamie. But I, she didn't tell him. So basically, uh, she then turns around and Colm wishes to... And basically, Dougal says Colm wishes to see her. He leads Claire down to the room. She and Frank found... And basically, it was the room that she and Frank found underneath the castle during their 1945 day trip. Of course, you know, that they saw that room... Um, in the first episode there. So, a shock runs through her. She takes a moment before heading in, and basically, Colm says, you have no connections with Cl with Clan Beaton, have you? And uh, Davy Beaton used this room as a surgery before he died, and now sh she will too, Colm tells her. Because, you know, but of course, Claire really wants to leave. She says, I want to leave. I want to leave. And he's, tell her, and he's telling her, no, you're not going to leave. You're going to help them. And uh, basically, he says, I believe that you have secrets, Claire. Now, maybe they're the kind of secrets that every woman has that pose no threats to me, to Leoc or the clan. But I, until I know for sure, you will remain here as my guest. And, and basically, Claire says, you mean as your prisoner, don't you? And he says, only if you try to leave. Dougal then shuts the door, and Claire ends up crying. So that's basically how the episode ended, and I'm really looking forward to the next episode. There's a lot of stuff I'm definitely wondering. Now, Claire, basically what they just said is that Claire cannot leave Scotland. She can't leave. She can't go anywhere else. They are on to her, definitely. She's basically going to be forced to be staying there. So 
I'm really looking forward to seeing if Claire attempts to leave, what's going to happen. Definitely Dougal's going to imprison her if she tries to leave. We'll have to see what happens. Also, is Claire going to tell Jamie about this way to get out of Scotland? Is, is she going to tell him about that? Um, because, you know, Jamie did tell her that she's kind of living in this world where the English are not conceived as good people. And Jamie's, like, the only person that really supports her, it seems. You know, Jamie really supports her, definitely. Also, um, uh, Gil Gilius seems to support her. I don't know what's going to happen with her and Gilius. We'll have to see what happens there. That's going to be interesting, definitely, um, what's going to happen there. As far as Jamie goes, I really felt bad for him. I like finding out more about his past in this episode, definitely. I thought it was very well done. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing more of his past. Also... Are we going to find out what Frank's actually doing? Because we did get an update on Frank, so I'm interested in seeing what Frank is actually doing and, you know, if he is actually searching for Claire like she thought he was. We don't actually know what he's doing. All we saw in this episode was him searching for Claire and just calling out, Claire, Claire, where are you? You know, we all, that's all we really saw in this episode. So, overall, I love this episode. I thought this episode was absolutely fantastic. Great second episode. Really loving this show. One of the things this show is doing very, very well is it's really portraying the horror of war and things like that. It's portraying that very well. It's also got its period. It's a very good period piece. Like, you really feel like you're in Scotland in the 1794. Um, definitely very much like Claire, you know. With they, The show makes you feel like you're with Claire because it's kind of like, where the hell are we, basically? And it's just very cool to see this, um, definitely. Very cool sets. Really loving the acting of the show. Just really, really loving everything about the show. Really looking forward to the next episode, which I know is going to be absolutely fantastic. So they sit for my review of Outlander, um, and again, guys, this is still my favorite summer show. I mean, the show really just, it can't do, no, it can do no wrong. This episode is absolutely fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next. That's in my review, though. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in my next video, which will be my review for, I guess, tomorrow's episode of True Blood. So I'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.